Seriously, Brett, what the fuck? What are you up to? I don't trust you. Why these questions for us specifically? Why us three? What do we have to do with these questions? If it was any one of us by ourselves, I think I could see. But I don't, I don't see how these questions apply to all three of us in, in some common way. Maybe, I mean, you know, I, I think we've underestimated you, Brett. Because, you know, there, there's, there's something going on behind that, uh, that face of yours. I almost said goofy face, but I'm trying to be nice to you. Um, yeah, you, you got a brain behind those eyes, don't you? All right, that's fine. I guess we'll just see what happens. Uh, first question is, does philosophy have any place in the world today? Uh, yeah, sure, philosophy has a, I mean, I myself am particularly fond of the Socratic method um, of, of uh, teaching, which is basically just asking the right questions and getting people to look at their own motivations. Uh, it's a way of forcing introspection on people. Well, not forcing, but, yeah, forcing's okay. Uh, basically, you force people to be introspective and to realize how little they actually know about what they're talking about. The problem with the Socratic method is its limitations are that people are so dumb that they come up with ridiculous explanations as to why they do the things they do. Uh, so it doesn't really ever end up teaching stupid people much. But when it comes to smart people who might just be a little bit um, shallow or, or just um, not very introspective by nature, it's a very useful tool because they actually get them actually start to thinking um, about, you know, just the things they do, the things they say. Um, so that is one element of philosophy that is very important, but um, more important than just, you know, the stuff like metaphysics and uh, epistemology and all that crap, uh, is just the everyday armchair philosophies of, of guys like you, and, and I would dare to say like myself, who just sit around and, you know, just you know, pull shit out of their ass, basically, and just say, okay, here's my idea on this, and here's my morals, and here's my values, and that's that. All right, when's breakfast? Um, you know, so it, it just, you know, it has uses. I mean, you ask if it has a place in the world today. I mean, obviously it has a place on college campuses where they're teaching philosophy, and and usually the the, the, the high concepts of the falutin intellectual crowd kind of trickle down and you know there's bastardized versions of, of of those philosophies in the masses I mean people used to think very differently than they do today I mean the way we think today is not the way that human beings thought a thousand years ago and philosophy did a lot to change that um, so did religion so did art um, but uh, yeah philosophy definitely has a place I think uh, so, let's go on to the next question. Where does morality come from? Why are you not a murderer or a rapist? Well, first of all, how do you know I'm not? Uh, second of all, uh, the reason uh, that I'm not a murderer or a rapist and, and the reason that we have morals in place is that, I mean, this has been explained before uh, in, in evolutionary terms. I mean, basically, you know, we evolved... Um, to cooperate with one another. Um, well, this really more applies to murder because rape actually has been an important part of the propagation of the human species, uh, whether we like that or not. Um, you know, it used to be very customary after you won a battle, you know, to, to take the, you know, women, uh, well, the virgins, so probably, you know, girls of, you know, uh, just young ages, I guess and take them as wives and basically rape them. Uh, so that was important to the propagation of the human species. I mean, some animals like um, orangutans uh, mate only through the act of rape. Basically, an orangutan is a very um, um, uh, what's that word? Um, they're loners, basically. They, they, don't, they don't live in little, they're not uh, communal creatures. 
And basically, when they, when they sniff out a female in their territory, they basically find her and rape her, and that's how their species is propagated. So that's a species that's propagated entirely through rape. But, but um, so there might not be an inherently, uh, there might not be some, there might not be an evolutionary explanation for why we don't rape. I think that that's just um, not so much to do with Darwinian evolution, but maybe just evolved sensibilities. Um, and you bring up rape a lot of times in this quiz, so we'll go back to that. Um, but uh, murder, it's, you know, murder, um, you know, other animals kill each other, obviously, um, even in, within their own species. A lot of times, uh, you know, monkeys and other animals will get into territory wars that will sometimes result in, in death. Um, but it's not very common that a monkey kills another monkey in its own... Uh, I don't know if they're called tribes or whatever the fuck they're called. Uh, or an ape kills another ape. Um, it doesn't happen too often um, because obviously that would be a detriment to cooperation. A species that is constantly killing off other members of itself is not going to uh, breed very successfully. Uh, the th things that we do that increase the odds of survival are much more important than things we uh, are, are likely to, to be propagated. Um, well, things that serve propagation, rather, are likely to continue. And things that um, don't serve the goal of propagation are likely to discontinue. And obviously, murder is detrimental to propagation of the species. Um, rape is actually not. So I'm not sure why... We don't rape. I guess that, uh, well, we, we do, I guess, as a species still. Um, but I'm not sure why it's socially frowned upon now. I think it's just because uh, a lot to do with, with um, the growing influence of the women's rights movement. Um, you know, basically where women today in society are pretty damn close to equal. Um, although I do have a few complaints against feminism, but I'll, I'll save that for a different video. Uh, so... Yeah, it's kind of tricky, I mean, but we can, we can probably explain it in terms of our evolution. Um, I, I do, I am a proponent of evolutionary psychology, um, and I think that a lot of things can be explained through that, and other things have to be explained culturally. Um, the things that we can't explain uh, by looking at our evolutionary history should be explained culturally. Um, there's a book out, I'm not sure of its name, uh, but I'll put it up on screen, and I'll put the link over there. Hope I pointed in the right direction. If not, I look like a fucking douchebag. Um, but I'll put the link up, and you guys can go take a look at it. In this book, there are listed, uh, I think, it's either 200 or 400 uh, human constants in every culture. Things that every single culture on this planet has in common. Um, I don't think that rape is frowned upon in every culture. Uh, I don't believe that's one of them, but I could be mistaken. Uh, if it is, then that's good evidence that it is uh, evolutionary for whatever reason. It somehow benefits us to not uh, rape women. Um, anyway, third question. Is rape and child molestation natural? Uh, well, I obviously, obviously I, I do believe rape is natural. I just said so. Um, something being natural and something being moral are not the same thing, obviously. Um, we have an evolved sense of morality these days, but it's not always been our morality. I mean, uh, religious people want to credit religion with improving morality, and it did for a point. I mean, uh, at one time, um, the idea of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was a very progressive stance. I mean, that was, that was a liberal idea. Because it used to be, you know, it would be a head for an eye or, you know, something like that. It was an advocation of, of fairness. And obviously today, that's an outmoded idea. I mean, in my opinion, it's an outmoded idea. Uh, I don't think that we need necessarily to uh, have retribution all the time. I don't think that it's necessary to take, to exact revenge on someone. Um, although, of course, if someone does something to me, I do feel the need to exact revenge, but I don't think that 
uh, that society should codify that. Um, but uh, it's it's actually I don't know it's kind of tricky. So I I, I kind of retract. I kind of retract that I guess because I'm now that I actually am saying it out loud I'm seeing some contradictions in it that I'm really gonna have to to figure out for myself I guess. Um, as for child molestation, I, I really don't know if that, I mean, really, it, it, the question of whether or not that's natural, I mean, Nietzsche once said, oh, I'm sorry, Nietzsche, I, I'm, I was taught to say Nietzsche, so I say Nietzsche, uh, but it is pronounced Nietzsche. Um, Nietzsche said that, uh, I believe it was Nietzsche anyway, I might be mistaken. Uh, that the only unnatural act is one that you cannot do. So, I mean, the very fact that child molestation exists pretty much goes to show you, yeah, it is natural. Um, like I said, though, natural obviously doesn't equal right, uh, at least not by our modern standards. Um, so let's progress forward here. Oops. Uh, psychologists and shrinks, are they helpful? Uh, pfft, no. No, I don't think they are. Um, maybe if you're profoundly disturbed. Uh, but I think that, that probably far too many people are in therapy that don't really need to be. Uh, this extends to psychiatry as well. I don't think that, that everyone should be regulating their behavior with drugs. Um, not in, in um, not prescribed ones anyway. Uh, I don't know. I just don't like them. I mean, I, this is not rational. I have no rationality to back this up. I, I can't come on here and, and say and and present some 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 case against uh, psychology and psychiatry. Uh, I just don't personally like it uh, because I think that. Um, what it, what it really represents to me is a marginalization of human idiosyncrasy. Um, I don't want everyone to be mentally healthy. I think that, that the, a lot of times the people that are the most fucked up, a lot of times the people that are the most tortured souls, are the ones that create the most brilliant art. The ones that uh, really are the greatest thinkers of our species. Um, so when someone says, let's start fucking with it, and let's try to make everyone happy, I start getting visions of, of, you know, one giant shopping mall filled with giggling idiots. And I'm not sure that I want humanity to be well-adjusted. I think that, that um, uh, us being a bunch of crazy fucking lunatics is probably, ultimately, one of the keys to our success as a species. So, yeah, fuck psychology, fuck psychiatry, fuck head shrinks. Um, obviously, if someone is fucked up to the point where they can't function in society, that's another story. But um, I don't think that everyone who has uh, some psychological problem necessarily needs um, uh, head shrinkers. So, oops. Next question: Would you kill for a deity if you knew it existed and it commanded you to? Like, uh, just any deity. I guess like if Amon Ra appeared and said, Go forth and destroy Chicago! Or, you know, whatever. Um, and it, it had the power to threaten me with hell. Uh, let me get some water really quick. You know, I, I probably should edit this out, but uh, I'm lazy. You're watching a long-ass video anyway. You can expect to see me drinking water and fucking picking my nose and flicking the boogers at the camera and shit. Uh, what was I talking about again? Oh, deities. Killing for deities. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, why did, I mean, I would, you know, argue with the deity, I think. I mean, I'd be like, well, what the fuck does that do? I mean, what, just to prove my fucking loyalty to you, you fucking dipshit? I mean, fuck you. You, you, you think you could just fucking kill people? I mean, what, who the fuck are you? I mean, you, oh, you created them, so that gives you the right to kill them? I mean, what the fuck? I don't get it. It's like two parents saying, oh, our, that's our kid. We fucked and created him, so we can kill him anytime we want. 
But, you know, the idea is if I'm faced with, with eternal damnation otherwise, I mean, I don't know. I mean, well, what, what happens to these people after they die? Did they go to eternal damnation? I mean, is there any, uh, are they going to heaven? Are they going to a hell? I mean, what, what, what's their fate? I mean, if I, I, I could kill them knowing that, that if, that, you know, most of them will go to heaven, I mean, I guess that it would be the best option. Um, but if they're all going to go to hell, uh, then, well, I don't know. I mean, if they're going to hell anyway, then I guess it really wouldn't matter since, in, you know, I'm just prolonging a life that's still going to end with them burning forever anyway. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a tough fucking decision. I mean, it's like something I can't possibly really imagine. I mean, I guess that I might just, you know, have to kill those people out of fucking sheer... Uh, terror for my own fucking immortal soul, uh, which I would be fucking shocked to learn I had in the first place. Um, so yeah, it's a tough question to answer, but I, I'd go with probably, maybe, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to know. Um, should gambling and prostitution be legal? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No need for me to even elaborate on that one, because obviously my beliefs on personal freedom are well known. Um, if I could will the world atheist, would I do it? That is to say, I snap my fucking fingers and BAM! The entire world stops believing in God. Uh, well, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, the whole thing about atheism is I think people have to come around to it. I don't think you can just expect, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily a good idea for someone to just have that void suddenly. Just be like, well, wow, I'm immortal, and I'm going to live forever, and everything is great, and I'm going to go to heaven and eat candy, and then all of a sudden, <gasps> there's no God! <gasps> I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea to just snatch that from them. You know, uh, faith has to be rooted out. I mean, that doesn't mean it has to be rooted out gently, though. Um, the thing that most atheists, they approach this problem all fucking wrong. They think that polite discussion is really what is needed, and it's not. Um, because, you see... There's no reason to be gentle with this. I mean, it's like, you know, these beliefs are, like, rooted in these people. It's like fucking trying to dig coal out of a mind with a feather duster. You know, you need a fucking pickaxe. You need to fucking hammer at those motherfuckers. That's the way you get that shit out of there. And someone told me something like, someone the other day said, you know, uh, the, you know, the amazing atheist has never had any conversions. I've never made anyone an atheist. Uh, that's not true. That's not fucking true whatsoever. I've gotten tons, tons of fucking messages from people who have become atheists. I've talked to people who I thought that I failed to convert when I was a kid who said that I was the one that planted the seeds of doubt. So my method does have success. Don't tell me it doesn't. But that's not my, but the thing is, that's not my purpose. That's not what I'm trying to do. It's not my goal. Uh, I'm trying basically to hurt their fucking feelings, to be honest with you, uh, because I want revenge on this fucking world. I want revenge on this world of religious fucking fundy idiots. And, you know, I figure that if I just attack them, uh, it's going to do one of three things. The first thing it might do is it might weaken their faith, in which case I've done a good thing. The second thing it may do is it may just hurt their fucking feelings. In which case, they're a fucking... But they're, they're a fundy scumbag, so what the fuck do I care? Uh, in the third case, it will actually strengthen their convictions. Uh, but if I strengthen their convictions, make them more extremist, put at, make some, go create some Jerry Falwells, go create some Shirley Phelps Ropers, those people will push other Christians away. So it still ultimately does a good. Uh, and those people that, are, that, that respond to, to this, no one, I don't think anyone is going to save most fundamentalists. I think for the most part, you can't fucking fix them. Uh, unless they have some atheistic tendencies deep inside themselves, you're not going to convert a fundamentalist. Um, and I could be wrong. I mean... I don't know, you should talk, people should talk to, uh, I believe Goat has quite a few conversions, I believe Fatty Chunks had some, but he's, he's gone now, I think, so, um, but, uh, but that's because their express purpose is to convert people, or deconvert people, or whatever, 
but I, I don't really give a shit about that. I'm just here to piss people off. That's my function. Uh, I'm just here to mock them. I mean, like, kind of like Captain Awesome. Um, I, I once had the goal of con or converting and deconverting or whatever, and I still think it's a noble goal for some people. It's just not what I like to do. Uh, what was the question again? Oh, if I could make the world atheist instantly. No, no, because it's people need to come to that decision by themselves. It's, it's a personal rights thing. It's like trying to say, uh, you know, you know, I don't know. There's other there's other things that I would get rid of in humanity in an instant, though. But I I don't think that's one of them. I don't think that's that's the right thing to do in that case. Uh, have I ever thought about killing someone? Can I explain why and why I didn't? Um. Uh. Well, who the fuck hasn't really? I mean, I, I I'm not. Do you mean how 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 seriously are we talking here? Like, are we talking like? You know, the kid at McDonald's fucks up my order and I decide that I want him dead or, or, or you know, in, in you know, the heat of fucking anger or something. Um, or are we talking about, like, plotting it out? Like, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to figure out how I can get away with it and, you know, I'm, I'm like, looking, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm sharpening knives and shit, you know, cackling to myself, <laughs> tonight she dies, you know, um... No, I don't think I've ever considered it um, that much. I mean, maybe I've probably come, I would say, maybe 50% of the way to where I need to be to do that. Um, when I was young, I kind of always assumed, like when I was like 15, 14 or 15 years old, I always assumed that I'd be a serial killer when I grew up. Uh, but, you know, that was when I was young and stupid and all fucking goffed out and shit. Um, I got older, I got over my fucking stupid anxiety and shit for the most part. And, you know, you, you put away that shit. Uh, I did anyway. Uh, every once in a while, I, I find myself wanting to go fucking cut some motherfucker's throat for some reason or another, but honestly, it's not worth it. Um, I, I see myself as being capable, but not really having the, the will to. Uh, at least no one has wronged me enough that I feel like I have to. Um, but, uh, if I ever was, uh, to kill somebody, um, I could see maybe it happening in a capacity, like, let's say, like, you know, you have, like, a like, ba like, you know, assisted suicide or something like that. If I was in one of those situations... Um, I think I could do it then, uh, like if someone had, you know, um, a situation where someone consented to die, uh, or didn't want to suffer anymore, or something along those lines. If I was sure of it, then yeah, I think I might be able to do that. Uh, but I, I've never really come particularly close to murder, I don't think. Um, uh, so I didn't. Uh, because I fear jail, and because I just really don't have the urge to end someone else's life. Uh, you know, it's not really mine, is the thing. Um, if someone gives it to me, that's another thing entirely. But until someone actually gives it to me, it belongs to them. Um, obviously, though, I mean, obviously there's a thrill to the idea of it. I mean, um... You know, you know, I've imagined things like, you know, being uh, like a vampire or a werewolf or, or something like that and going out and, and killing people, and that would be cool. I mean, that would be cool. We all, well, not all of us, but a lot of us think about that kind of shit. And I've had fantasies where I'm like a serial killer, and I, I, I write, I've written stories about serial killers and the act of killing and stuff like that. So, I mean, it obviously holds an interest uh, creatively, and obviously it would be a very intense experience, um, but ultimately, I don't really feel like I have the, the lack of empathy necessary, I guess. Uh, I've always been somewhat of a highly empathetic individual, um, so it's really hard for me to want to actually kill anybody, because I can usually find redeeming traits in just about anyone. Uh, let's see what else we got on here. Why do I believe that we are the only group that are civilized and cultured? I guess you mean humanity in, in general. 
Uh, well, actually, I mean, um, I mean, obviously, we are the most intelligent species on the planet. I mean, th there's some fucking PETA idiots that'll be like, well, no, -uh, because no other animals kill each other. Whatever, fuck you, you're an idiot. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I don't know. It's, you know, well, it had to be someone. I mean, if, if cats and dogs had evolved to this point, um, and I mean, they, every other species, you know, there's species that are more evolved than us. I mean, the chimpanzees have evolved more uh, since the, their, you know, break off with us as a species. Uh, the chimps have evolved more than we have. Uh, we've just evolved differently. Um, we've evolved to use our brains. Uh, our brains have evolved for, you know, calculations and, and cognition, uh, whereas other species have evolved for other traits. I mean, like a, a dog has a, a good sense of smell or, um, or, uh, let's see, what, what, what else? Um, you know, uh, w there's species out there that develop a, a lot of extraordinary traits. I mean, I imagine the, the strength of a, of a gorilla. I mean, um, uh, you know, an animal that's 400, 500 pounds that can lift itself with one arm. I mean, that's incredible power. Uh, you know, we don't have anything near that. I mean, so we haven't evolved a trait like that. Um, so it's really just the thing that we ha that our evolutionary course, we just it just took us down that particular road. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, I, I'm sure that plenty of scientists speculate on it. I just haven't read any of their speculations. So I, I'm not sure. Can the Big Bang be repeated? Does the universe have an end or a beginning? Uh, uh, I'm not really qualified to, to answer that. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I, I know practically nothing about um, cosmology, so, but just from, you know, a worthless, completely worthless gut instinct kind of thing, I don't believe that, that, that it has a beginning or an end. I think that it probably always existed in some capacity. It probably always will exist in some capacity. Um, but I've heard that, you know, scientists, I think Richard, um, not Richard Dawkins, um, Stephen Hawking, uh, is, is is formulating a theory where something actually can come from nothing. Um, at least I've heard that. Uh, so maybe it does have a beginning. I mean, I obviously don't have any idea, but my gut instinct is that it's infinite. Um, so, um, I don't know. Uh, thanks for the questions, Brett. Um, really curious to know what exactly they were for. Peace the fuck.